Hello and welcome. My name is Allie Levine. I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer and I'm the ITS Applications Training Lead at Wichita State University. I am so excited to be with you today to talk about the Power User Program at WSU and some of the techniques we employed to increase training attendance, build community, and encourage a culture of learning. Before I jump in, I would like to ask you a question to keep in the forefront of your mind, and that is, how can a change in culture affect training attendance? I'm going to show you some statistics a little bit later, but I would like you to keep this in the forefront of your mind as we jump in. Okay, here is a brief history for you. You are looking at monthly averages of Microsoft Office training attendance for ITS-led training sessions. So monthly averages, 2015 saw an average of 10 attendees per month. 2016 had an average of eight attendees per month. And I do wanna mention that I'm going to be um, largely ignoring 2017. Uh, there was a break in instructor availability in 2017. So I'm, I'm gonna be leaving that data off uh, for that reason. You're going to see it when I show you the statistics a little bit later. But so some months there were only zero attendees. Also worth mentioning that our Microsoft Training Lab holds 12 people at a time, so something to keep in mind. These are obviously low figures, so it seems important to delve into the question of why people avoid training. Here are some very common citations that I've heard. It will be boring. <laughs> Someone's gonna be reading from a book with prescribed stale activities and I'm gonna be stuck in this room. It's gonna be boring. I won't learn anything. I already know everything. Great example of this is Word and Outlook. Uh, very commonly, people have to interact with those programs by necessity over the years. So a lot of times they, they've got it figured out and they think, well, I don't really need to go to a training on this per se. What about the opposite? They don't know everything. And I'm afraid you're going to judge me for this. Fear of judgment is huge. So great example of this. I've had several occasions where it's the first time someone's coming to attend a training. They come up to me before a training session and say, I just want to warn you, I'm going to be very bad at this. So they're kind of stacking the deck against themselves. So they're afraid that someone's going to judge them. This is a big one too. Old habits will be challenged. So this is a fear of change comfortable norms might be taken away, right? So this is a really common one. You might challenge the way I'm doing something. There are a couple of additional reasons that are very commonly stated, but I mention them separately because I suspect that these are code for one of the previous reasons. First, I'm too busy. We hear this one a lot, don't we? I have a great example for this one, actually. I had an attendee tell me that um, she couldn't attend a Word Essentials session, where, by the way, we cover features like mail merge, because she was too busy hand addressing 200 envelopes to students. So in that case, I think, well, I am too busy, might be the official statement, but um, mail merge could have decreased that busyness. So I, I guess I'm saying, I suspect that in this case, there was perhaps a fear of old habits being challenged or, or something else. And of course, there's always good old procrastination. <laughs> I'll attend sessions after X, Y, or Z, right? So what are some of the effects of training avoidance? Well, obviously, you don't know what you don't know. So there's going to be a lack of knowledge there. Whether or not people are aware of it, they may not know how to use a program they're interfacing with daily. This is leading to a lower efficiency. So thinking back to the example of the attendee and mail merge, um, Lower efficiency, she's having to hand address 200 envelopes. Imagine how that lowered her efficiency or worse, at the end of the day, her morale. So training avoidance is one thing, but also mixed into this atmosphere is a general culture that lacks acknowledgement. So we're, we're generally not acknowledged very much after our final graduation, whatever that is, high school, college, grad school we're generally not acknowledged much after that final degree. In fact, we often hear more about our mistakes than our successes. So here's an example. I was working with somebody on an Acrobat fillable form and we created a JavaScript and um, uh, did all sorts of cool things to this fillable form. And I checked back in with her about a month later and said, hey, how's everything going with that fillable form we created? And she said this, everything must be going okay. I haven't heard any complaints. 
So here's a perfect example about how we're kind of used to hearing more about our mistakes than our successes. So this is in spite of a recent research study by Global Force in 2013 that found that 89% of people are more motivated by what they're by being told what they're doing right than what they're doing wrong. We kind of get it backwards. So in the midst of apprehensions about training and that general cultural lack of acknowledgement, we created a credential and a training track for faculty and staff called the WSU Microsoft Office Power User Program. This was aimed at addressing both that lack of acknowledgement and the training avoidance issues I just mentioned. I also want to mention to you that uh, this is not an official Microsoft program. It's just a, it's a WSU training program for faculty and staff. So we soft launched this in October of 2017 and announced it formally in an email to campus in December of 2017. And I'll tell you a little more about those two processes. These have changed a bit since launch, but um, here are the sessions that are required for becoming a power user. It's always been a suite of seven trainings regardless, but um, so it's three Excel sessions, uh, one Word session, PowerPoint, OneNote, Outlook. Outlook they get to choose between essentials or advanced. That's one thing that changed. So uh, they do need to take these within a year. That year is flexible. However, what is not flexible is there are no exceptions to attending any of these. So people would ask sometimes, well, I know Word pretty well. I don't need to come to that one, right? Nope, you still need to come to that one because <laughs> you don't know what you don't know. And by the way, Word and Outlook are the two sessions I would say people are most likely to report surprise at learning new skills. They'll say, wow, I thought I knew everything about Word. Or wow, I send emails every day in Outlook. I didn't know about all of these features. <clears throat> so great success with that. What happens when you become a power user? Well, you receive a certificate, printed certificate, um, also a digital credential through a claim, which is very exciting. And uh, if people will allow, I will also put their name and picture on our website and blog, which I will share with you a little bit later. The claim badge was a great addition. It really gave attendees bragging rights on social media. You can share in a claim, you can share pretty much any social media platform you want. Uh, and it gives you a downloadable badge to put in your signature if you want. So that was very positively received. I told you there was a soft launch in October of 2017. And by that, I mean, I only announced it to existing attendees in training sessions. Uh, the official email announcement was distributed in December of 2017 across campus. And prior to doing that, <clears throat> I listed what I thought was a sufficient number of sessions. I thought, okay, I'll put several of each offering out there for people to take and try different sessions. But I was surprised to wake up to this. This is a screenshot from my email uh, the day after that listing. Um, this is a bunch of waitlist requests. I woke up to 32 waitlist requests, meaning that all the sessions completely filled up and 32 people in addition were waiting to get into sessions. This was amazing. I had to rush around and list some more sessions. So you can surmise from that waitlist situation that attendance grew. And I'm gonna show you the results in a minute, but I did wanna delve into a concept that fuels ideas like the Power User Program and also motivates the general atmosphere of the sessions themselves. And this is a principle of people-centered training. So to return to some of those fears I mentioned earlier, um, it's going to be boring. I'm not gonna learn anything. You're going to judge me. You're gonna challenge my old habits, right? I really feel that all of these lead back to one idea, and that is a loss of control. Even just the first concept, boredom is about a loss of control, right? You're gonna be bored in a room, but, um, but really uh, challenging your old habits is a loss of control. Fearing judgment is a loss of control. And I really feel like for attendees, a loss of control can easily happen when the people who attend your sessions become an afterthought. So this is really important to me. I know I'm not the first person to think of this concept, but um, this is really important to the, to the principles of, of the power user training sessions. Training is about people. I know this sounds so basic, um, but a lot of times we trainers can get hung up on focusing on the software or the program, and we've all been there. We get so focused on imparting knowledge in talking and telling and being heard, 
But truly, the greatest teachers have always been the best listeners, right? Software exists for people. All of IT exists for people. <laughs> if people get no use out of a program, what's the point? So I really believe that if this concept is at the center of your philosophies, everything else will fall into place. And I constantly recenter myself around this model. So there's a lot to discuss about this concept, but here are a few places where I started. First of all, that each session should be inclusive. And I mean this in every sense of the term. We're all in this together. We all might have similar problems even to, to solve. So let's collaborate. Let's share our knowledge. Someone else might have the same problem as you do. Let's figure it out. Very collaborative environment. I feel that also it should be encouraging. So I'm thinking about those people who warned me they would struggle in a session, right? The fear of judgment. Yeah, you, I just want to let you know I'm going to be really bad at this. They're kind of stacking the deck against themselves. So with those people, especially thinking about how incredibly powerful it is when someone believes in you and really believes in you, by the way. I really think people are experts, whether they realize it or not, in sussing out how you really feel about them. So really believing, no, you can do this. You got this. Uh, third idea, really important to me, that trainings are lighthearted. And um, I think this works really especially well with people who come in with some level of fear about computers. So sometimes if you take away that seriousness, you take away some of the anxiety. So a couple things I do for this, they, they can't break anything. They're on lab computers. Worst case scenario, we restart the computer and it'll be fine. Um, also, I try to build into the training exercises lots of reset points. So worst case scenario, we can reset again, no problem. Also, very important, it's okay to laugh. So humor, very powerful tool with a lot of things actually, but also training. Speaking of lightheartedness, and at the risk of embarrassing myself, but I do have a reason for showing this to you. Here are my last couple years Halloween costumes. Uh, on the left, I was Countif, which is a function in Excel that we learn about in Excel Advanced Formulas. I wore that wig through an entire session. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Uh, the one on the right, Flash Phil. In this case, the character is spelled like the name Phil, but uh, in, in Excel, it's F-I-L-L, -L, Flash Phil. We learned about that in uh, Excel Essential. So it's sort of in keeping with that spirit of lightheartedness, but also I have a reason for showing this to you. Because Flash Phil started a bit of a trend. <laughs> there was actually one power user who requested to wear the Flash Phil cape in her certificate picture. She said, hey, I want to have that cape on for my when I become a power user. And I said, sure, that's awesome. But now, it's, she sort of started a trend. More often than not, the cape actually makes an appearance in people's certificate pictures. Totally optional. In fact, the entire picture is optional if, they're, if they don't want to do it. But a lot of people really do, and a lot of people enjoy that cape. <laughs> so I'll give you a link at the end where you can go to see more of these, but here are just a few. Okay, now to the most exciting part, the statistics. <laughs> How did it go? So I asked you a question at the start of this presentation. How can a change in culture affect training attendance? So I ask you to consider, how much do you think training attendance increased after implementing the Power User Program? To remind you where we started, in 2015, the average monthly attendance for Microsoft Office trainings was 10. 2016, average monthly attendance, 8. And remember, we're disregarding 2017 because we uh, didn't have an instructor for part of the year. Here's 2018. 68 average monthly attendance. 2019, 83. That is a monthly attendance increase 10 times over from the 2016 figure. Pretty amazing. I also want to remind you that the lab only holds 12 attendees at a time. So this might be our max. Uh, we typically have sessions two to three times per week. Here's that information in another way, um, kind of on a grander scale, I guess. Um, so here is training 2015 Microsoft Office training attendance by month. Here is 2015 and 2016. Let me bring this up to current. So you can kind of see why I skipped 2017, right? It doesn't really look like a, a valid year to look at. 
So here is the attendance in 2018 and 2019. Pretty amazing. You can kind of see visually what happened. The soft announcement in October, the uh, email that went out announcing the program in December of 2017 and how it kind of skyrocketed from there. By the way, since we've done a couple years, kind of see some trends like uh, kind of a dip in September when fall semester starts and sometimes in December during shutdown when we're shut down for a good portion of the month. But cool stuff. We send out evaluations after each session and I did want to share this portion of the evaluation with you. Um, this is from the respondents through the end of 2019. So the same figures that you saw on the previous two slides. So the end of 2017 to the end of 2019. First question that I'm sharing. The Power User Program motivated me to register for a session I wouldn't have otherwise taken. 86% said yes, 14% said no. This one, I don't even really see the 14% as a loss because they they would have taken the session anyway. I guess, I guess that's okay. <laughs> but 86% said I wouldn't have taken this session otherwise. Second question. This session gave me the tools to be more efficient at work. 99% said yes and 0% said no. So the way I read this is 86% of people took a session they wouldn't have otherwise taken that has now made them more efficient at work. I think that is the coolest statistic. It is my favorite of all the statistics. <laughs> uh, very cool stuff here. Uh, and by the way, if you're looking at the second chart, you're wondering where that 1% went, right? So this session gave me the tools to be more efficient at work. 99% said yes, 0% said no. There was a third response option, and that was not applicable. Do not use Microsoft Office in the workplace. So there were a handful of people who came through the program because they were interested in learning about Microsoft Office, but don't actually use it on the job. So custodians, plumbers, painters, um, our custodian actually took all the sessions and um, told me that it gave him some confidence to apply for a broader range of jobs, which I thought was really cool. I've focused a lot on attendance numbers, but there have been numerous additional benefits from this program. So first of all, the relationships that have formed on campus, um, these inroads that have been created from just having more attendees come through trainings have been invaluable. I've learned from their questions. They've learned more from coming to the sessions. Also just having the ability to reach out to end users and to take a temperature on a new product. Uh, like Teams, we launched Teams this year. Being able to go out, you know, ask people how things are going or if they, you know, how they're using Teams has been so valuable. Um, also, productivity and morale. I've heard this reported back so much. Uh, several supervisors um, contacting uh, me and telling me that um, they've seen an increase in productivity and morale. One supervisor in particular told me that, um, she, she sent me an email and said, what is going on over there? All of my staff are coming through those power user sessions and they're coming back and they're so excited and they have all these new ideas and they're creating these amazing new things. So she reported an increase in productivity and morale. She started requiring the program for new employees uh, and she actually came through and took all of them herself. So pretty cool. The Power User Program was a catalyst in creating a greater culture of acknowledgement and also a, a great first step in building community. There was an additional next step that I wanted to be sure to tell you about, born out of some of my observations from the first year of the program. So here are a few things I observed in the first year. First of all, really common question after somebody finished all of the requirements for the Power User Program, where can I find more information? There was a real desire to continue that conversation. So they'd come through, they'd take even sessions that weren't required for power user, and they still wanted to learn more. They'd kind of, uh, it unlocked an interest in these programs. I also noticed a handful of special situations that were really interesting, um, but really only applicable to a small number of people. And I always wished I could put them in a full training session, but it just wasn't something that would, would fit in a full training session, but still needed to be shared. So that was another observation. Uh, and also uh, new knowledge, uh, new launches, new discoveries, new features. So Office 365 launched somewhere in there, which is different, right? We're getting new features that are constantly popping up in this program instead of one big launch of new features like we did in 2013 and 2016. 
So how do I get this information to people who've come through all the, the sessions already? With this in mind, in December of 2018, uh, launched, so it's a, a year later, launched the Office Bytes blog, <laughs> bite-sized tips and tricks for Microsoft Office power users. And I say power users, but really anybody could subscribe or browse the blog, of course. Um, the intention was really to address those observations from the launch here. So a place to process those special one-off requests where they could also be viewed or shared with others really easily spreading the word about new features in 365. So I just recently, for instance, did one on the new transition in PowerPoint, uh, uh, Morph, which has kind of a special trick to using. Um, I also had some requests for exercises and homework to practice some of the new skills people learned in the training. So I did put together some challenges and solutions here and there so people could try out things on their own at their own computer. Uh, and here are a few statistics from the Office Bytes blog, in case that interests you. Um, people can subscribe uh, and be notified when there's a new post, but they don't have to, they can just browse around. But uh, you can kind of see because of the subscriptions that I post usually every week to every other week kind of depends. And you can see what happens when there's a new article posting, there's kind of an increase in readership. Usually we don't dip below 100 views per day and the max is usually around 400 or so. So it averages to about 200 visits per day. So pretty cool. That's since uh, December 2018 when it launched. So to sum up, um, here's a reminder of some of the key concepts from today's sessions. Just first, I really believe in those people-centered training principles. Uh, it addresses those loss of control issues for one thing. I think the Power User Program was a great model for this idea, and it really showed how a small change in culture can create an increase in uh, training attendance. But more than that, can help you build community and foster relationships with your end users on campus. I want to thank you for attending this session. I wish we could be together in person so we could chat and banter about this, but I know that's not possible and I understand. Uh, I'm going to leave you with my contact information. If you've decided to implement something like the Power User Program at your institution, I would love to hear from you and hear how it goes. Or if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out. Thank you again for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful time at EDUCAUSE.